Große Raubfische. Large predatory fish, like the pike, love cool water. In summer, everything is warm except down in the thermocline. We'll show you how to find the thermocline with the deeper chirp. Back to the studio. Wie man mit dem Deeper Chirp Plus die Sprungschicht findet. How to find the thermocline using the Deeper Chirp Plus. Finding the thermocline is something really cool but we need to know why it makes sense to bother searching for it, and that is where we start. What is the thermocline, and why is it a hotspot? We also have very species-specific detailed topics in our books, Finding Fish the Smart Way, the Pike for example. Why is the thermocline a hotspot? We will now make a short introduction to this topic. This picture is sponsored by Deeper and here we can easily recognize the thermocline. It looks like noise that we can see here in the water. If we look carefully, we can clearly identify the signals or the fish arches found within the thermocline. The echoes here are big and we can see very clearly that the fish here are bigger. Here too we have bait fish that is, prey fish that reside above in a school of fish. We can see here how some of them dive into the thermocline as well as the predators here. The thermocline can be a very good hotspot. Predators hide in the thermocline and prey fish feed on the thermocline. But this is not the case in all waters. This is due to the difference in density in this layer. Because of this difference in density, the particles are trapped inside the thermocline and cannot go up or go down. That is why we have so many floating particles. In addition, the reason why we receive this echo here lies in the fact that the frequencies are more or less blocked within this layer and because they cannot come through properly, the echo is created. This works with the deeper chirp plus, but not always. As the spring comes to an end, the thermocline starts to form when the water towards the surface warms up faster than the deeper waters. We can see that here, we have the shallow layer called the epilimnion, then the thermocline and underneath the hypolimnion. Here we can see a temperature drop between the layers. Let us have a look at the thermocline in summer. That is, from the end of spring to the beginning of autumn. We can see that swimming up here is fun with temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If we go a little deeper, you can sometimes feel like it is getting colder and there is a good chance that the thermocline layer is close to the top. Within the thermocline, the temperature drops significantly so that it becomes cold quite quickly. Depending on the depth of the water, we can have a constant temperature of 4 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Fahrenheit at the bottom. Almost every standing water, with a depth above 5 meters or 16 feet, has been observed during research to form a more or less strong thermocline. As a rule of thumbs, we can say that the thermocline is very likely to be formed in lakes or waters that are deeper than 5 meters or 16 feet in summer. Here we can see the layers with different densities, where the denser water lies below. On its top lies the water with the lower density and depending on how muddy or how rich in algae the water is, suspended particles are trapped in here. The pikes stay in this area and the prey fish feed on the thermocline. Because it is muddy in here, the pike can use this thermocline as a cover. Pikes like lower temperatures in here is much more pleasant for them as compared to the 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit water temperature above. The deeper can detect the thermocline, which we are going to demonstrate in a live video we have recorded. We are at a very small artificial lake and today, we will be testing the deeper chirp plus. We will try to detect water layers with the frequencies supported by this chirp plus. The thermocline is a layer which separates the warmer water on the surface from the cold water at the lower part of the lake. Depending on the water body, its size and also the season, it is found at a different depth. The thermocline is more or less an insulator or a density blocker that separates the warm water with a different density from the colder water at the bottom. The floating particles or plankton are therefore caught on or in this layer and contribute to its formation. If we were to observe this layer in a clear lake, then it would really just be clear water, then this really muddy broth. Pike use this layer as a hideout. Firstly, they hide within the thermocline and use the muddy broth as camouflage. And while bait fish feed above on the plankton, the pike can hunt from below. Secondly, as already mentioned, the thermocline has a cooler temperature and because pike love it cool, they find it comfortable. 
This lake has a surface temperature of about 27 degrees Celsius or 81 degrees Fahrenheit, so the thermocline should be a really cool and pleasant place for fish that love colder water. In the next minutes we will be off to test the deeper chirp plus. What can we achieve with the different frequencies? Can these frequencies detect the thermocline? In other words, can they find the hotspot of predators and bait fish? By finding the thermocline, we can have a very good estimation of how deep we should fish. Now, how do we find fish when there is a thermocline? We will first experiment with the high frequency, to start, we cast our deeper, then change the beam angle to narrow and observe the thermocline. Here we have changed the settings, so we pull out and cast again. This time we are a little more to the right. The narrow beam angle shows us the thermocline at about 3.9 meters or 12.8 feet. We reel in the deeper, there is not much to see, just a fish arch, a small echo below the thermocline. Otherwise it remains relatively empty below. Now, we just let the deeper drift, meaning the wind drives the deeper to the right towards the bay. On the image it is towards the bottom. The deeper has been driven across properly, but we can already see that the high frequency hardly gets through the thermocline and the lake bottom is displayed at about 4.5 meters, that is about 15 feet. The simple explanation is that the thermocline blocks the high frequency. We will now lower the sensitivity and see what happens. At a value of 50%, the thermocline disappears completely, but we start wondering why we cannot see anything going on there at 4.50 meters. We increase back the sensitivity value. The reason is the frequency is blocked by the thermocline. We will cast again later with the mid frequency. This is much coarser, its wavelength is longer, and it should make it through the thermocline. Then, we will have a look at what is going on under there. Right now, there is not a single fish to see, even with our deeper setup at the highest sensitivity, and of course the narrow beam angle. The little we can see right now, displayed by the deeper are underwater plants. As soon as the vegetation is above the thermocline, it becomes even clearer, as we can already see right now. The bottom line is at 3.8 meters or 12.5 feet. The deeper has been driven further to the bay, so we will just reel in. We cast the deeper once more, we see the underwater plants here too. We receive nice signals again, it all looks great. We read 1.4 meters or 4.6 feet, so the shallow water mode is turned on. We cast again at the same spot and switch to the mid frequency. The deeper is in the water, the display is being updated, and the connection to GPS is being established. Casting was a success, so let us switch to the mid frequency. The sensitivity is set to maximum, but we do not see the thermocline with the mid frequency anymore. I slowly reel in. Now we see fish arches which were not visible before, and these are found below the thermocline. However, we know the oxygen level below the thermocline is really low. Here we see other arches. It could also be beds of weeds that are displayed to us here. We know that the underwater plants start at 3.7 meters or 12 feet. 
When looking at the image, we could say that is where it begins. Furthermore, we have arches of fish found at 3.7 meters or 12 feet. We cast again with the middle frequency farther to the right and try to reproduce the picture or the place from before. So, we have casted the deeper. Now we let it drift a little bit. We can already see that it is being driven to the right by the wind. We are at 6.5 meters or 21 feet of depth. The thermocline is not visible. The arches that we can now see are elongated because the deeper is drifting slowly because of the wind, not very fast. Besides, there are relatively few signals. I am assuming that the thermocline also blocks some of the mid-frequency, so that not so much comes through. We can see that on the bottom, that the bottom line is not clear, but broken. Here we start getting signals at about 4.5 to 5 meters, that is 15 to 16 feet. We let the deeper drift a little bit more. We will just reel it in. Here we also see a few more signals, unfortunately they do not tell us much. It all looks a bit blurred. The deeper is not working properly. Now we have some upcoming signals. Everything seems to be blurred. Not what we would normally expect. The underwater plants at two and a half meters or seven feet start to become a bit clearer. So, now I reel in faster, and we will observe the same spot, this time with the wide frequency. This frequency gets through the thermocline. And we cast right at the spot with the wide cone. The deeper is in water, this time, our cast was further to the right. And here we can nicely see how the deeper has been driven into this bay. We receive a lot of signals here. The deeper is not moving, so we will reel it in now. Here we can clearly see how the fish hold out against the vegetation just above the thermocline, here at 3.7 meters or 12 feet. This means that the thermocline also ends below the vegetation. The plants produce oxygen here. Barely above the thermocline, it is coolest. We can conclude that the fish have chosen the best place where it is still cool, where oxygen is produced, and where they have better chances of surviving. It should now be clear that the three frequencies of the chirp have obvious advantages over the deeper pro, which is limited to 290 kHz in its frequency range. Furthermore, we saw how the deeper chirp can be used to find the thermocline with the three different transmission cones, or this time with the three different frequencies. So, pay attention to the season, the formation of the thermocline mostly happens between the end of spring and the beginning of autumn. Choose the narrow transmission cone to detect the presence of the thermocline or if there is a reflection. It is important to set the sensitivity to the maximum value. The noise must not be reduced and then cast a few times with the wide transmission cone, that is with a lower frequency. Here too, we observe that the thermocline can still be vaguely detected. The thermocline was not really visible on the display with the medium cone. We do know that the narrow transmission cone or the high frequency is perfectly suited to detect the thermocline and its location.